Hook it and cook it. From the catch to the kitchen, it's your front row seat to learn mouthwatering new ways to fix seafood. It's time for Hook It and Cook It. I'm Frank Willem. Welcome to another episode of Hook It and Cook It. In today's episode, you're going to learn how to cook seared yellowfin tuna. It's a fantastic dish that you're going to love. But as usual, first, we got to go hook it. So let's get to it. Anglers who enjoy fishing for yellowfin tuna are blessed with a whole lot of them in the Gulf of Mexico. Catching a 150-pound fish is quite an experience. Tuna fight hard, and once you get them to the surface, they tend to swim in circles. You reel like mad as they near the boat. Then you're left helpless when they turn around and take back most of the line. Tuna are an extremely powerful fish and can rip the gaff from your hands in an instant. Yellowfin tuna reach sizes of just over 200 pounds in the northern gulf, but 400 pound ones have been caught off the Mexico's Pacific coast. Blackfin tuna are generally a lot smaller, but bluefin tuna can reach 1,000 pounds. We've even filleted one right out of the water for sushi, and the flesh was still moving. That's just a little too fresh for my taste. The main thing to remember about preparing tuna is not to overcook it. So now we got the fish and a master chef to show you how to cook it, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Hook It and Cook It. We've got Master Chef Thomas Jennon from Bay St. Louis at the Blind Tiger to show us how to cook seared yellowfin tuna. One of my passions is for fishing blue water, and one of my passions as far as the fish I catch is tuna. I like yellowfin tuna, they fight good, They're, but the best part about them is the way they taste. But part of the way they taste is depending on how you go about cutting them up. And today we have Thomas is gonna tell us a little bit about the best way to cut the tuna so you get the optimum steaks and pieces for your other dishes. Thomas? That's right, Frank. This is, uh, this is probably one of the most versatile fish in the Gulf of Mexico. It's definitely the most hard fighting, right? As we all know. I'll vouch for that. Uh, this is the reason my wife will no longer go in blue water. But um, they'll, they're, they're really a challenge to catch and after you catch them and you clean them. And, and this, again, I've mentioned this before, this loin of tuna was overnighted in to quality seafood this morning. Mm. The FedEx truck dropped it off. So it's fresh. And you can see the quality. It's dark, it's red. It, this is like the filet mignon of fish. Um, the only way you can really screw this up is if you overcook it. The dish we're gonna do tonight is a seared yellowfin. Mm -hmm. uh, I've sold this in a, ki every kitchen I have run, I've sold the dish that we'll prepare tonight. And it's really simple, it's really quick, and people love it. Um, so I'm gonna break this down real fast and we'll get into the different cuts. Okay. Um, and the one thing that everyone needs to keep in mind when you have fresh fish like this is <clears throat> give it away before you freeze it. Give it to your neighbor, give it to your friends, give it to your secretary, give it to your buddy. Whoever, you know? just don't ruin it and freeze it. Don't freeze it. It's not even a comparable product once that happens. I don't care if you freeze it for a week. So anyway, enough about all that, but what I'll do is you can look, <clears throat> and this is the part of the fish that's up around the back. Mm -hmm. So I cut this right here, and we're just gonna make a cut right down the wall. Um, and then we're going to open this just like that. And you can see these tendons and all of these muscles. These fish are very strong, and that's what all that is. Um, so I'm gonna work the edge of this knife down. And when we buy this stuff, it's, uh, you know, wholesale. We're paying in the $14 range. But by the time you cut it down, just like a filet mignon, you buy a beef tenderloin, by the time you get down to the prime part, that meat might be $25 a pound. Because there's so much so, waste. That's right. So we don't waste any part of this. Um, at the Blind Tiger, one of our best-selling appetizers is smoked yellowfin tuna dip. And so, use this piece here for the... This piece. Mm -hmm. And again, like, you know, it's the summertime, people are in town, we're busy. Um, when I cut fish at the restaurant, we're going to cut 12 pieces like this. You know, this is about, a, this is about an 8 to 9 pound loin of tuna. I'm going to order 120 pounds, and we're going to assembly line it, process it, but we don't waste a piece of it because it's, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. um, so here's the 
Here's the skin and the, the tendinous pieces, so to speak, right? A lot of gristle, a lot of tendons. Okay, so we took the skin off and this is our smoke, this is our smoke tuna dip. Mm -hmm. Okay, then what I'm gonna do to get to the part we need is I'm gonna take the loin and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this part even. So I'm gonna cut this off. Now, look at that. Oh yeah. You know, and the other thing is people eat this. We'll make sandwiches. This is where your grilled tuna salads or sandwiches or any of that should come from, okay? Um, so like, you know, maybe we'll square this off. We'll put this over here in the, the tuna dip pile. Then we'll cut this in half. And let's say we wanted to do a blackened tuna salad, okay? Or let's say for the guys watching the TV, they book a, a charter trip down in Venice and they go to Venice and they catch eight yellowfin that are 60 to 80 pounds. They're gonna have 250 quart ice chests full of this meat. And that's, you know, cut it up, spin, you know, get your buddies over and drink a couple beers and sit outside, and over exaggerate about how fast you caught them and all that. And cut it up the right way, portion it, size it, and then you have your your sandwiches, you have your smoked tuna dip, or you have your, hey, you know what? My wife loves to make tuna fish salad, all right? Use it, get rid of it, don't freeze it. That's, right. that's my that's biggest secret. Thing. Okay, so this, this would be like, hey, let's do a tuna salad, okay? Well, we're gonna put two pieces on some fresh arugula and make a little vinaigrette, or we're gonna make a blackened tuna salad. I mean, a sandwich, that's our sandwich piece. So you, you see where we're headed with this. Oh yeah, yeah. Nothing goes to waste, everything gets used. Um, now for the dish we're gonna do tonight. <clears throat> okay, so we have our loin, right? And again, it, it gets back into to the uniform and the consistency aspect. So I'm gonna cut this loin in half, just like this. The first time I was in a restaurant, the lady, <clears throat> this lady asked me, I would like my tuna cooked. And it was kind of like, how would you like your chicken cooked? Right. And she insisted I have it rare. And I thought, well, I'll try it. And I, it was like a different food. I, I, I just, and I've never had it any other way since. It's amazing. Yeah, and then it's really good. Like, you know, um, first thing, and the day after you get back from the fishing trip and you've, you know, like anything, man, you, it kind of tastes a lot better when you've caught it yourself too. So now I've kind of squared these up. This is your prime two pieces of the tenderloin. This is out the center of the loin. And this is where you would cut your entree portion steaks. Or in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this in half again. And we're gonna use this on the seared yellowfin tuna dish uh, that makes a great appetizer or a great entree. And <clears throat> we're going to put fresh kosher salt and cracked pepper on these loins. We're gonna sear them off. And then for the, for the production aspect of it, we're gonna put them into the refrigerator. We're gonna let them get cold. All of this stuff slices better it's in this preparation when it's colder. Okay, so this is for our seared tuna that you and I are gonna do. You're gonna be the seared man. Okay. We're gonna get you to sear it up. I'll season it. And then <clears throat> just so we can show them, uh, everybody loves fresh grilled tuna, right? Mm -hmm. So I would, if we were gonna throw a dinner party and do like a grilled yellowfin dish, this is where my steaks are gonna come from. And then it's kind of like a filet. How thick do you want it? You know, that's about a probably eight to nine ounce piece. And then you cut them all the same thickness. But the key is you, this piece has to be the same for that piece to be the same. Right. And every, every fish can be, every loin can be cut to become uniform. Mm -hmm. And so here's our entree steaks grilled, mm -hmm. two to three minutes on each side. Here are our pieces that we're gonna sear on all four sides, chill and serve with seaweed in this, the sauce and the dish that I've been doing since 2002 at uh, Tigres. Great, I, I know I've had that several times. Man, it, it's this, the dish we're about to do is the only dish that's consistently followed me over the last 10 years. So now we have the tuna ready to sear. And it's about to go in the freezer for a few minutes so it'll cut a little bit easier. But in the meantime, we're gonna show you a great wine pairing, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Hook It and Cook It. We're in the process of making a seared yellowfin tuna dish, 
but a great dish is made even better with the right wine pairing. We've got Scott Sutherland, he's done the wine pairing with the tuna dish tonight, and I'd like to ask you, Scott, uh, could I kind of explain to the viewers why you chose this particular rosé? Uh, this, this rosé is produced by uh, Paul Hobbs, who is considered one of the best winemakers out of California right now. This is his rosé of Pinot Noir, it's from the Sonoma Coast, and uh, the nice fruity background of it and a nice little lean acidity tends to pair with the, the, the tuna, the protein the aspect of the tuna incredibly well. So. Well, that, that's good. It was excellent. But if you, if you couldn't get a hold of one of these, what would you say would be a good alternative? Uh, we tend to enjoy at the restaurant at the Montai, we tend to enjoy a, a rosé of Malbec by Creos, which mm -hmm. is Susanna Balbo. It's, it's a great alternative also. Great. Well, now we know the right wine, but let's get back to cooking the seared yellowfin tuna dish. I know I can't wait. All right, well, you learned how to cut up a piece of tuna. Now, we're gonna, <clears throat> Thomas is going to show us how to cook seared yellowfin tuna, Thomas? That's right. We're gonna sear, this is the loin, this is the one of the pieces that we cut to sear. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I always like to put the cracked pepper on here first, and I love these little pepper mills. Okay, so fresh cracked pepper. Rotate it. Rotate it. All right. Put a little cracked pepper on all four sides. And then, this same seafood spice that we have. Put a, a, a liberal little amount. You want to turn it for me? There we go. The cracked pepper has a nice texture to it. And cracked pepper, again, is better than ground pepper. Um, okay, so, and again, if you like it spicier, put more pepper on it. And then look, see all this, this stuff here? Kind of do this. The fish will pick it all up. Look at that. Okay, and then hot skillet extra virgin olive oil. Some people you could even use like sesame oil if you wanted to. All right, and then literally, we're gonna put it in here. See that? And what you're looking for here is <clears throat> probably 15, 10 to 15 seconds on each side. We just wanna put a little texture. Like a crust on it sort we of. We wanna put a little crust on the outside of the filet. And then we're gonna put it off onto another plate, get it out of the hot skillet. This stuff will overcook as it sits. Don't just take it off the flame. It will still cook, okay? And then to do this dish, look at that, Frank. Oh, yeah. And you can see right here what you're going for. So you do this to each side of the fish. Sear him off 15, 10 to 15 seconds on each side. Put him onto a room temperature plate. Put it into the freezer. How long do you leave it in the freezer? You want to put it in the freezer 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Don't put it in there. Don't you don't want it frozen it. just to That's firm right. it up, right? You want to get it back to a cool, cold temperature. And this is so it cuts, it. so it cuts easier, right? That's right. Okay. Just like red meat, yellowfin tuna cuts better when it's cold. Things contract when they're cold. Things expand when they're hot. You want to get it back into the, or if you have time, if you're throwing a party or you're doing this for dinner in two hours, just put it into the refrigerator. But sear it, bring it back into a cool temperature, then we'll slice it. And uh, this dish is sure to please any occasion. So I mean, the whole cooking time, from the time you, you started, we're looking at what, five minutes, something like that? Yeah, man, you, you cut the tuna up, season it, sear it, put it in the freezer, cut it, eat it. Five minutes. If you wanted to go that fast, you could, for sure. That's it. So we're seared off, and you see, you can see that. See how it's got the, yeah. the white around the center? Like That's a quarter it. inch or so, yeah. That's right, so we're gonna take this. We're gonna go right onto the plate. I'm gonna go put this into the freezer. In five minutes, we're gonna slice, you're gonna slice it up and we're gonna fix the appetizer dish. All right, we have the seared yellowfin tuna. It's been in the freezer for about 10, 15 minutes to firm it up a little bit so it's easier to cut. And so now we're gonna <clears throat> cut it up and plate it and show you just how good this uh, seared tuna is. All right, you ready? Watch we're this. We're ready, Thomas, go ahead. So basically, you cut this stuff, okay? Saw how easy that cut? Oh yeah. And then if, look at that. See, we have a nice little edge around the center of the loin. Beautiful. And then Frank, if you could, sure. I know you've cut many of these up in the past, uh, Slice it in about quarter inch slices. Okay. Let it fall, and then I'm gonna show the guys the appetizer. Okay. Um, and again, we've been selling this dish um, 
I started this dish in 2002. And I mean, we've served thousands of people this one particular appetizer. And I, again, you know, this is one of those things where um, if you don't like it rare, get something else because it does not taste the same if it is cooked well done, right? Eat tuna fish salad, don't eat seared tuna. You know, and, and everything is like that. Um, so for this dish, this is a seaweed, this is a sesame seaweed salad that you've had if you've eaten any sushi or you've gone to any sushi bar. Um, so we line the, the center of the plate up with the, the seaweed salad. And then we're gonna take these pieces of tuna and we're just gonna put them right on the top, right? And you can see just how succulent that looks. I mean, it just, it, it's fork, literally fork tender. There is no knife required for this dish. And uh, if you haven't eaten it, try it. And I promise you, uh, you're gonna wanna continue to eat it. Uh, this makes an, a, a fabulous appetizer for a cocktail party too. And you can make this in a big, different shapes, like different platter platters, or whatever, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so to plate this up, Frank, we use, this is a soy glaze. I know you've had this before. It's soy sauce, sugar, brown sugar and white sugar, a uh, little orange, and we put this over the top. It's kind of like a homemade teriyaki sauce, and then sriracha. Sriracha sauce. And we put this over the top That little bite here. there, huh? It does. This dish will wake you up, but guess what? It works, man. It's extremely well. And uh, Scott has a wine. Um, this is my new favorite, Rosé. The wine that we've been selling with this or recommending people get with this is uh, made by Paul Hobbs, Cross Barn. It is a rosé of Pinot Noir. It's not white Zinfandel. That's what I, I thought at first, I wondered. <laughs> I have not gotten to that point yet, but <laughs> this wine with this dish, fabulous. And so if you'd like, uh, you know, we can try it, taste it. Absolutely. I think I mean, you'll find that it's a winner. Well, Thomas, you've created a, a masterpiece here, and I, I tell you what, I, I can't wait to try it. Let's give it a little shot Let's try here. it, man. You go first. Mmm. Just think about that. Boy, the flavors of that. The sriracha and that soy glaze. The tuna literally just melts in your mouth. It, it does. Melt it does. It's so tender. Yeah, it's yeah. excellent. Let's what try the wine with it, man. Oh, that's excellent. That, that's very nice, excellent. Yeah, it kind of milds out that spicy sriracha. It does. You know, and, and again, this is, uh, I wanted to show you all this, because again, I think it's like that cedar planked speckled trout. It's simple, but it's unique, and it's easy to prepare at home. And the, I mean, the secret clearly is the high quality tuna, but then you got this nice crust going on here with the, the meld of flavors with the soy glaze and the, and the seaweed salad and the sriracha. It's, it's, that's awesome. You did I'm, good. I'm glad we could do it, man. Let's go catch some. Let's do it. What a great dish. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with more Hook It and Cook It. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Hook It and Cook It. You learned how to cook seared yellowfin tuna today, and you can go on our website to find the recipe so you can cook it yourself. See you next week on another episode of Hook It and Cook It.